What up, everybody? It's Pastor G. I'm in the house. It is Friday. I'm excited. I am excited. I'm excited. I'm so glad to be here. I hope you are too. This is the uh, uh, day that the Lord has made. Of course, you know the rest. You, there's an order with this. You must rejoice and be glad. Be glad in it. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. This is a day to be happy. Of all days of your life, today is the day to be happy. I'm excited. I, I am. Really, I am. I am so excited about being alive. Those of you that can hear me, uh, I want you to be excited, too. I want you to be excited, too. Thank God for all of you that are in the house today. Uh, Pastor Nolan Brown. Pastor Stevie T. Robinson. Man, I was not in the house, but I was watching you, the dry bones. I watched the sermon on last night. Thank God for you, brother. The anointing of God was up on you. Thank you, Linda Worship, for being in the house. Uh, uh, Ga Gawana Wilson, Deidre, Pastor Deidre Johns, of course, my wife is in the house. Yes, Marissa is in the house. I thank y'all. I thank you guys for faithfully coming. Cookie is in the house. Anitra, Shani Walker, I call her my personal prophetess. Thank God for your words of encouragement. I am very thankful today. I am, This is the day. I got some good news. I got some good news. I've got some good news. I want you guys to stick with me today. Uh, I, I, there's something that God has shared it and then dropped in my spirit that's going to be an eye opener. Uh, it's something that's going to be confirmation to some of you guys. And, and, and we need as much com confirmation as we can get in these times. Amen. My collar is up. Thank God. We need as much confirmation as we can get in these times. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about this. If you will, please go ahead and share this. Share this with as many people as you possibly can. Uh, let me tell you what this lunchtime uplift is all about. Make no mistake about it. It's about you being uplifted. There are so many things that God has promised us. And he fully intends to bless us with everything that he says. God's word is sure. It's standard sure. But here's the thing that we must be ever conscious of. There is a part that I must play in this whole thing. Uh, uh, God is a God, and he, he's looking for mature children. Just like us as parents, we always look for the mature child because we want to, we, everything we do, we work really hard to, to, to get means so that we can bless our children. And God is a God that the that script says, the earth is Lord, then the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to him, and he wants to give it. He created it for you, his child. But there is a level of maturity that we must walk in for him to give us this stuff. No doubt about it, he wants you to have it. No doubt about it, you want your child to have it. No doubt about it, you want to bless them with things. You want to give them advantages, advantages that you never had. You want to give it to them, but... You would never give, even though you had the ability and the wherewithal and the and the and the resources to to buy your child a car. You would never give your ten year old a car. You 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 know at the handing of the keys to him or her, it would be almost like giving them a gun to kill themselves. Because if they're not mature enough, if their their mind is not. Uh, processed enough to handle a, a something that is supposed to be a blessing will actually become something uh, to uh, bring destruction in their life. And so this is why God tells us, I, I need you to mature. I need you to follow instruction. I'm watching your instruction following techniques so that I can give you the thing that I so desire for you to have. And so this is very important as we process the blessings of God. I know we're going to hear many things that say it doesn't matter how reckless you are in your decisions, God is going to give you things anyway. He's going to give you stuff. Well, he'll never put more on you than you can bear. Rest assured, my brothers and sisters, that's not just talking about trials and tribulations. That's talking about blessings. If you're not ready for a certain blessing, if you cannot receive something from God without having to flaunt it and tell everybody how much you got and how they can't get what you got, that's a sign that you're not mature. Already, we're going to deal with that in the text today. I am excited now. Now, here's the thing this year, 2018, we are in February. This is the ninth day of February. Man, have y'all noticed how February is? Woo, we're already almost done. January took forever. It's just like, man, we're still in January, but February is, is 
is is moving and it's moving fast. Here's one. Here's something that I want to suggest. I made a commitment to myself, and I want you to make a commitment to yourself as well. This is lunchtime uplifting, so we're we're trying to bring information. We want we we want to have a different outlook on life, and I want to I want to say this before I really get into what I'm about to say. I want you to make a commitment to yourself. Listen to me. Make a commitment to yourself that you read more this year. You read more this year. Make a commitment that you're going to read more. The more information you get, the more you become aware of things and now and it it, it 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 lessens the things that get you in an uproar because you have information on the more you k in o w will determine the times you have to take in o for an answer let me say it again the more you k in o w no will determine the times you have to take in o no for an answer it's all about your information now here's a, here's something very beautiful. Uh the the scripture says in Romans 10:17, faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. So it's very important that I am very selective about what I hear. See, see so many times we especially as Afro African Americans, we are in, in in many times in uproar because we never read. We listen to what somebody said that might had a problem with somebody. You know how many people that you have rejected that were sent to be a blessing in your life that somebody else deemed to be an enemy? And so you you said they were an enemy because somebody else said they were enemy because the person might have had a bad exchange or a bad uh, situation and they don't like them. They might have asked the person to do something that's totally, totally crazy. And now they don't like them because they did not drop their standards. They did not drop what they had in morals to do it. And now they're mad and now they're telling you how horrible this person is and you have believed him. And that's the way it is about the scripture. So many people have listened to people uh, teach from scripture that was upset about something and here's what's happening. You ever heard the the the, the theory? It's a theory that uh, the Bible was a tool used by the white man to bring us into slavery. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. We all have. I've heard it too. Now here's the here's the poison about the whole thing. If you believe that, now listen to me. Listen to me. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because we all believed it. That is a, a, a sign, that is a, a, a picture of someone that never read it for themselves. If you have heard that the Bible was a tool by the white man to bring us under subjection and you believed it, it's only because you never read it yourself. As I've been teaching in Lunchtime Uplift, there has never been a text that I've read out of the scripture that suggested to you or to me that I was a slave to anybody. As a matter of fact, the scripture suggests to me that I'm not in bondage to no man. I can live the life that I desire to live because God has given me the gifts to live it. And if you believe what the, the lie that someone has told you, that it was a tool used to bring you under. Now, it did bring a lot of people into subjection. It did bring a lot of people into slavery. You know why? Because they never got in and read it. They just took someone's word. Mm -hmm. It's called, I'm getting my books. It's called, I Heard and They Tell Me. Well, I heard and telling me can get me into a lot of issues because there's a lot of things you heard and a lot of things you've been told that if you never examine for yourself, you are subject to it because of somebody else's opinion and their outlook on life. That is very powerful that we change it. So this year, this year, this year, 2018, we're going to make a commitment to yourself, to ourselves. I have made a commitment that I'm reading 10 books, 10 extra books. Now, I read a lot already, but I am determined to read 10 books. And sometimes, you know, it takes a month. It takes a, a sometimes two months to read a book. So if I'm going to read 10 books, I've got to get busy. So I challenge you to get busy real quickly, real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. Here's a book that I want you to get because faith comes by hearing. <clears throat> so it, it's determined by what you're putting in your spirit is the is going to determine the results that you come out. I want to believe in God. I want to believe in the supernatural. I want to believe that there's things that's going to happen to me, advantage that I'm going to receive because God said I could. And there's everything <clears throat> that I experience and get in life is not going to make sense to reason, but it's going to make sense in the supernatural. And that's what you need to happen. You need supernatural exchange in your life because unfortunately we've gotten to an age. I know I have that 
I might not be at the place where I could go back and, and pick up a skill or be developed in a skill like some that are 16, 17, 18. So that does not mean that life is over and I'm being thrown, kicked to the curve and now I'm, I'm, I'm being non-productive. So I've got to believe in this God that says he can do my latter years can be my better years. Somebody got to got to get that. My latter years can be my better years. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna say my latter years are my better years. Or in other words, the rest of my life is gonna be the best of my life because I'm gonna trust in God through faith, and He's going to move. Why don't you grab a hold of faith right now? Why don't you get yourself in a position of faith so that you can receive what God has said about you? Stop listening to the critics. Stop listening to the naysayers. Stop listening to the people that keep telling you what you cannot do. God didn't say you couldn't do it. It's what they said. So you're going to have to read to find or to get into the K-N-O-W for you so you don't have to take the N-O for answer. Ten books this year is my challenge. You might do five. But I am determined that I am going to prepare myself in my information. Because remember, downtime is prep time. Downtime is not off time. In the times that you have a moment, pick up something to read because God is trying to increase your knowledge base. That's what Lunchtime Uplift. Here's, here's a book that I want you to look at. Man, I'm just going to show you some of my secrets. The Case for Christ. See that? See this? The Case for Christ is a great book to, to read. It's by Lee Strolls. The Case for Christ. The case for Christ. Why Why are you reading the case for Christ? Because we need to make a case for Christ. Because if we don't make a case for Christ, then we're going to have issues like we're having right now. We need supernatural intervention. And the only way to get to supernatural intervention is through the door that God has created for us to go through. And we got to make a case for Christ because he is the door. He is the door. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. Hey, look here. Here's a book that I want you to really look at right now. I'm in the middle of, so you can go, guys can be on the same page. It's called Killing the Kryptonite. John Bevere. Very powerful book. Killing the Kryptonite. John Bevere. It talks about destroying the things that steal your strength. Think there are things out there that's trying to take away your strength right now. And the enemy is very deceptive, and you got to be very careful because... The worst thing that you could be is in a place to think that he ain't out there. You That means that you're already deceived. Mm. Look here. Look here. Dr. Lynn Howes. Dr. Lynn Howes. Dr. Lynn Howes. Look at that right there. Look at that. Look at that. Dr. Lynn Howes. From Law to Grace. A, paradigm, a kingdom paradigm shift. Man, I love this. You can read this. You can read this. This is very powerful. This is, this is one of the books I am in right now. Wow. Watch this. I'm about done. I just want to show you this. I just want to show you this. I want you to do the same thing. Dr. Rizzi Zacharias. Oh, my God. Dr. Rizzi Zacharias is one of the most incredible teachers of our time. Apologetic, apologists of our time. I'm telling you, man, I'm reading Jesus among secular gods. Jesus amongst secular gods. God, this book is so powerful. Any of the works of Dr. Rizzi Zacharias is so incredible. I'm just showing you guys what I'm reading right now. And of course, good or God. There's so many things that we see in good that the enemy has brought in deception and we call it God. Just because it's good does not mean God. Sometimes it's just our so, uh, thing that he sends to deceive us. So now this is what I'm reading. This is why I, I suggest... <clears throat> Why are you reading this? Them are all books dealing with theology and, and, and God. Yes, because faith comes by hearing. If I need supernatural intervention, I got to go to the one and learn about the one that is capable of producing that level of exchange in my life. That is God. So I need to get information about God. Some people are reading CNN all day, so they're building faith in maybe what Donald Trump is saying because they're talking about Donald Trump. I don't need to know what Donald Trump is doing. I need to know what God has said about me. Now, do me a favor again. Share this. Share this video. I'm just giving you enough time. This year, I would read. I will read more than I've ever read before. I'm already an avid reader, but this year I'm reading more than because your K N O W your No will determine how many times you have to take N O No for an answer. 
we're going off so, so many times of what I heard and what they tell me. My objective here is to always engage you to go. And I, I like a lot of times, I I don't care if you say I don't believe it. I'm going to go see for myself. That's the best thing that could happen because a lot of times what you heard and you built emotion around is what somebody else have thought in opinion and you have become a slave to it because you did never ever go to see if it was true you are mad at people you got enemies that's called witchcraft really scripture talks about it witchcraft for me to be mad at somebody because someone else is mad and i think that happened more oft times than not even in our society right now we got people that are mad at people uh, uh we we under the theory just like there are white people think that some, there's some whites that think that all black people are destructive. There's on the other side, to be honest, there are some black people that think that all white people are e evil. It's because we've been taught it. You know, you know, when you read in scripture, here's a powerful thing about scripture. This is not time uplifting. I'm uplifting right now because you will not be under witchcraft. I'm not going to think thoughts just because you are mad. You know what? The Bible says he will make your enemy your footstool. Or he'll cause your enemy to bless you. What happens if I got an enemy that is there to bless me or there to be my footstool or there to open up doors for me and I won't have a conversation because somebody else said that they were mad? Then I lose the advantage that God has prepped for me. This is what we have to see in scripture. There are people that are enemies that think they got advantage of you, but really when you know what God has predestined you for, everybody that think they might have advantage on you, God has told you already that I've given them to open up a door that your friend couldn't open up, that your family couldn't open up. So now I got to break the cycle. I got to break the mindset. I got to break the stronghold that says you can't talk. No, you can't talk to them, but I can because I'm intelligent enough and I got enough knowledge that I can engage anybody and the favor of God is upon me. So he he works in my favor. He works in my favor. You are favored of God and he's working in your favor. Go ahead, share this, share this, share this because I'm about to open up something very quickly and give explanation to something that you are experiencing currently right now. You're experiencing some things right now that don't make sense and I want to bring some spiritual explanation to that because this is where we are. We need spiritual explanation. We need to see a divine intervention from our God and it's very important that we get this. Now, I was thinking today and sometimes I do things and, and I learn a lesson from it and that's what we are to get from life experiences we are to learn a lesson I got stairs in my house I got stairs in my house and if I'm not thinking if I'm distracted by something if I'm, if I'm not thinking you know I can go up and down my my stairs without ever even knowing that I'm going up and down my stairs because I've done it so many so many times my, my it's just it's just it's just by default, my, my feet know the space between the stairs. I can run up them, I can come down and walk up them and walk down them without any problem. But there are days that I can come into my house to go upstairs and there's something in the middle of the stairs and if I'm not careful, I'll, because I'm conscious of something being in the stairs, I'll miss my step and almost fall. Well, well, well that's the way life is. That's the way life is. You know, there's, you are built to be able by default, by the blessings of God, by the grace of God, to go through some things without even thinking about it. But here's the thing. The enemy will put something in your path to mess you up so you become conscious of things so that what you could get over by default, now you're having a struggle with. Please hear me today. Please hear me today. You're having a struggle with. Now, here's what is happening in the life of so many. And I know it because it's happening to me and I want to share it with you. You've been experiencing some unusual things, unusual phone calls, some unusual events, some some things that that is just here to disrupt your peace. Just just here to disrupt your your peace. Just here to disrupt your life. Things that you would you would just normally carry on, but now you're being disrupted by the thing. And so what what the enemy is trying to do 
is create enough petty circumstances in your life to where you are now very cautious, cautious and very apprehensive about life. The things that you would just move by default, the things that you would just go on by default that you have been given the strength to handle by default. Once you get enough little bitty petty things to disturb your peace, to disturb your life, now when the phone rings, you are expecting some bad news. You are expecting to hear something wrong. You are expecting because you're seeing little small things happening right now that is here to mess up or to throw your rhythm off. And somebody that is here today, you know exactly you are saying, Pastor, I'm experiencing that right now. I don't care what your lifestyle is. I don't care what walk of life you came from. I don't care who you are. I don't care what level of life you're in. We are all experiencing things right now that is causing us. We are all watching things on social media. We are all watching things on TV until it makes us wonder what is about to happen next. This is an enemy that's trying to get us to expect, that is trying to get us to expect, to expect tragedy in our life. Because he knows that you're going to receive at the level of your expectancy. Now, here's a spiritual law, my brother and sister. It's a spiritual law. What you expect, you receive, whether it's good, whether it's bad. That's why the scripture says, and God says it very clearly. He says, I set before you this day. I call heaven and earth out against you this day. I set before you good and evil, life and death. I'm not going to tell you what to choose, but I would uh, advise you to choose life. I would advise you to choose. He says, here it is. The choice is yours. Will you choose life or will you choose death will you choose good or will you choose bad it's your choice it's not god's choice he says i said it out there i'm telling you you do have a choice here's the beautiful thing about the text here's the beautiful thing about the text here's the beautiful thing about the text if i'm in life right now experiencing something that is considered death to me that is considered a tragedy to me. Notice what the text says. I set before you good and evil, life and death. I set before you. In other words, if you are experiencing a situation that is suggesting that is death, don't accept. Why? Because he says, I set before you life and death, good and evil. In other words, what he's saying, there's an option that is opposite of death if you would choose it. Don't let someone tell you that it's over just because death is presented. No, he says, I set before you life and death, good and evil. If there's something evil there, you don't have to choose evil by default because good is standing right there ready for you and with his hand up saying, pick me pick me where death is life is saying pick me because God did give you the choice to live God did give you the choice to live now these conversations that I'm having today was was sparked I had a conversation with my son and I, I know he don't mind me telling you we talked last night and it's such a beautiful thing and I want to I want to applaud I want to applaud I I I I uh I I'm really proud of my son uh he's got two children just we just had a new grand baby girl two months or a month and a half ago, and I'm excited. And I want I always want to acknowledge when you see young men that are taking care of their family, taking care of their family. And I want to applaud that. But we were having a conversation last night. I thank God for my son. We were just out on a trip together out to Los Angeles, and it was such a beautiful time. But he was, we were talking last night, and he was saying, Dad, pray for me. And, and because, you know, life, listen to me, my brothers and sisters, life, 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 life is life. I want you to, I need you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Life is life. Life is life. Now, what do you mean by that? As long as you live life, you are going to experience things. I don't care what your title is in life. You're going to experience things that you it's going to be totally outside of your strength and power. Yes, totally, totally outside your strength and power. Totally outside your abilities. Totally outside your pay grade. Totally outside your plans. You know, you can you can have the full 
the best plan in life. You can be done dotted all your I's and crossed all of your T's, but there are experiences in life that you have that you throw up your hand and say, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's confusing sometimes because if it came to you making a decision on your job, you were always in control. Everybody could come to you and expect you to come up with the answer. You were always the one that was poised when everybody else was 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 frantic. Everybody else didn't know what to do. You were the one that had the answer. Everybody could come to you. But now you are discovering and you, ex you are experiencing these moments of your life that life sometimes gets and, and, and tosses you something that you don't have an answer for. You just don't know how. What did this show up? Well, here it is. I want you to make sure you understand that. That is called life. And as long as life is life, you're going to experience life. And you want to experience life. I tell a lot of people this sometimes. Pain, pain is a sign that you remain. Pain is a sign that you remain. In other words, the fact that you just felt pain is a sign that you are still here. You're still here, yes. I'm still here because I just felt, I just felt the pain. That that's a sign that I'm still alive. And and so and so there's there's moments that we 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 experience things. So many are experiencing things right now that were out of your control. You want to beat yourself down. You want to talk about yourself because you're usually under control. You usually got the answer. You usually know what to say. You usually know what to do. You you got multiple answers for this, but this time. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I'm faced with something that I don't know how to handle. That's okay. That's okay. The Bible says in your weakness, in your weakness, he is strong. They, these are the moments. These are the moments. They are called the let's see moments. Let's call it that. The let's see moments. What are, what are the let's see moments, Pastor G? Let's see. Let's see if all of the stuff that you've been bragging in the uptime, do they apply when you are in your downtime? Let's see if all of the faith words you talk while you are up, let's see if they are still applicable when you are down. Let's see if I'm still your God in your val valley situation, just like you said I was in your mountain situation. Oh, this is, this, we've got to get this. So there's times like right now, right now, because uh, I, I, I usually have, have an answer. Well, God wants you to know that there's things that only he can solve. In your life, there's things that only he's going to be able to bring you out of. You're going to be weak and he's going to show you that I'm God. I can bring you out if you will trust me. These are called the less see moments. Let's see if you really believe it like you said it. Let's see. So so my son and I are talking. He says, Dad, pray for me. Got some things in place, but just, there's just sometimes that that we look ahead, and that's all right. That's all right because if you're not looking into your future and it does not scare you, or if you're not if you're looking into your future and you are saying I don't know how I'm going to do that, then you got a problem, Houston. If you're looking into your future and it don't suggest to you that you're going to need God or a supernatural intervention. You are not looking at it right. If you're looking into what God has said and you are not saying, I don't know how, you are not looking right. If you are looking into the promises of God that he promised you and you're not, you're saying, man, if I put all of my resources, I put all that I know, if I do all that I know to do and it's not, and, and you don't feel like I'm going to come up short, then maybe you are not seeing the, the blessings of God at the magnitude of God. You got to see it at God level. Yes, God is allowing you. God is allowing you in these moments. Here's what he does not want you to do. And here's what I'm here for is to tell you that just because you've gone through a series of events where it seems like one thing after the other thing, after the other thing, God don't want you to get in a position where you expect to lose or you expect tragedy or you expect things to go wrong. And it's very easy to get yourself in that posture where I don't want to hear, I don't want to get that, take that phone. I don't want to know what that is because I know what it, I know how this goes. You get what you expect. 
your faith produces. Now watch, you can have faith coming by hearing. You can believe in what God says or you can believe in what the negative things that you hear suggest. And this is what God is telling us today. Don't let a series of events that is called life don't let it dictate what you speak about your future. Don't let a series of uh, uh, missteps tell you that it's your life. No, no. Don't say my life is horrible. My life is bad. No, there. it was a moment in your life. It's not your life. It is a moment in your life. And I made this analogy one time before. Uh, we just experienced the Super Bowl a week ago, uh, uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. And, and here, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You know, it takes months to prepare for the Super Bowl and it takes months after to put things back together because the event is one of the largest events of our year in sports or in just uh, 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 America in general. Now, watch this. Here, here's the important thing. Here's the important thing. The, uh, the, the time it takes to recover from a thing is based off how big the event was very important to get this the time it takes to recover the cleanup time from the super bowl is different from the cleanup time from a high school basketball game because the event is of a high school basketball game is a lot smaller than the super bowl and not a lot of things put into place now here's what you must understand the Super Bowl happens one week, one Sunday out of a year. It's not an event. Your vacation that you're going on this year only happens a week or two, or if you're fortunate, three weeks a year. But it's not the thing that you on. You're not on vacation every day. It's eventually, you have to get back to work, right? You wish life, your entire life was a vacation, but no, you go back to work. So you will never say my life is a total vacation because you know Monday I got to be back at work. So why is it that when a calamity comes to life, you call it your life? You must remember. You must remember. You must remember, my brothers and sisters, it was an event. Depending on the size will determine how long it takes to get back to normal. Yes, you have experienced some major events in life. You have experienced major tragedies, but it's not your life. Give yourself some time and things will get back to normal. Don't you say this is my life. What's going to happen next? Let me suggest to you what's going to happen next according to scripture. You will recover. You will come out of this better than you ever was because your mind now is going to allow you to say that the rest of my life will be the best of my life. I don't care what I've suffered. I don't care what I've gone through. I don't care how many times I've gone through it. I'm not going to let that be my life. I refuse to let my life be defined by a moment of a, or, or, or a tragedy that I experienced. The call is yours. I set before you life and death good and evil you choose which one you will live god has given you that decision don't say my life is messed up you can just as easily say my life would be the best life ever after this as as easy as you can say my life is a tragedy it's all you are governed by your mouth and it's very important that you live life according to those principles. Speak it, speak it, speak it, say it to cement it in your heart. And then ultimately you will see it in your life. The rest of your life is the best of your life. So as my son and I having this conversation, we're talking, we, we begin to pray and I begin to open up some things because it's very easy to get on a, a trend or easily pick up habits that suggest, you know, this is what I'm going to have to endure for this period of time. Jesus says to his disciples, say not that in four months harvest is coming because of the regular thought pattern of people that are wise that say this is how long you have to endure this he says say not in four months that there will be a harvest he's saying to you don't say i've got to wait till summer for my life to get better 
Don't say I got to wait to spring for my life to get better. I got to wait till this happened for my life to get better. In other words, say not that in four months there is harvest. He's saying to you right now, the harvest is ready to be received by those that can see what he is saying. So now here's the, here's the rule again. You're going to have to say it to cement it. And ultimately, you will see it in your life. Now, let me push this a little further. Let me push this a little further. Now, you're going to have to go back and listen to this. Now, I want you to go share, go share, go share, go share. Because um, for the next few minutes, I'm going to get into something that you need to hear. Uh, uh, we are in what is called spiritual warfare. Listen to me really clearly. Because these are some things, uh, conversation that has been lost in the body of Christ. These are some conversations and the enemy is, is so deceptive. He wants us to forget that there is an enemy. If Jesus says that there's an enemy, we must recognize. Now, the doctrine is saying that there's not one. Uh, you just, this is just something by chance and you're just going to have to do whatever you're going to do. But I'm here to tell you that what you have been experiencing, there's an enemy. Jesus says in John 10, 10, there's a thief that's trying to kill. He's trying to steal and he's trying to destroy it is his objective to totally ruin your life. And the quicker you understand this, the better. It says, don't be afraid of him, but be wise of his devices. And I want to highlight a couple of things today because today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day that you are moving on. You're fighting too much with what people are saying. You're fighting too much with what people's ideas not that's not your fight you ain't wrestling against flesh and blood we we spend too much time talking about people and blah blah, blah. quit talking about people people got a right to their opinion get focused on what god has said about you because in the text 10 10 says thief come not but to kill still in other words notice the text in in, in specifics the thief come it not that is important that i read that like that the thief come it not but to kill steal and destroy Come it not. The thief come it not. Understand what that is said. It's really speaking volumes about you. How you say that, Pastor? Look at the thief coming out. In other words, the thief will not get on his moped. The thief will not get on his bicycle, tricycle, wagon, or whatever means of transportation that he got. He coming because he sees something that you possess. The thief coming not but to kill. How can he kill where there's no life? You thought you didn't have life, but he just told you, I'm I come and not. I'm not even getting prepared to come to your house unless I discover that you got life. They come down but to kill, steal. How can he steal where you when you don't have any merchandise? He's telling you you got merchandise, or I would get on my moped, bicycle, skateboard, roller skates, roller blades to come to your house. He's trying to suggest that you got more than you know. And it says he's come to destroy. What is he trying to destroy? He's trying to destroy your dream. And he's doing a good job because you're listening to people tell you that this is just the way it is. But I'm telling you, we're in the spiritual warfare and I'm making you recognize that you've got more. And your indicator is indicating that you've got this life. God has promised that you might not see it, but the indicator is telling you that it's there. He don't come unless he recognizes that you have got the goods. I'm here to tell you. You have got the goods and you've gotten it and you got it from God in abundance. Let's live what God has already given us. Now watch this. We're, in, we're there. We got to recognize that he's trying to rob us of something. It is his objective without motivation. He don't need motivation. He don't like you. Why does he not like me, Pastor? Well, let me explain. He fought to be like God. He fought to get in position with God. He fought and was kicked out. And then here comes God telling you, I'm going to give you everything that he got kicked out to get. So you got a hater on your hand because you're living the position that he desired. Why am I fussing with people why am I fussing with people? Why am I fussing with people? I've got to stop for a minute and look at what I've been blessed with, what God has given me. The enemy will send people. He'll get you so off focus talking about people that's hating on you, talking about people that don't like you. Talk, people got a right not to like you. People got a... 
Listen, remember, if you go back uh, a two or three lunchtime uplifts ago, you'll discover that every Hannah is going to have a banana in her house. In other words, you're going to have a reminder to tell you that you better bring this baby forth. I'm not going to let you sleep until you have or give birth to this baby. Now, here it is. Here it is. I need you to get this. Somebody got to hear this today. Somebody's got to hear this. God is urgently wanting you to recognize that because you've had some events in your life, there's a thief that is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. The, what the text says did, but I have come that you have life and it more abundantly. In other words, he goes back to the text again. I'm setting before you life and death, good and evil. There's a choice. There's a choice. You're going to have to choose that I'm going to live. Even though the enemy is suggesting that you should be dying. And I'm going to take everything. But he says, wherever he presents death, there's a life option there. Will you choose it? Will you choose it? Will you choose the life option? It's up to you. You can have it. So we're in spiritual warfare. And what, what is happening? What is happening right now? Please hear me. Please hear me, my brothers and sisters. There's an enemy out there right now. I know we done went about uh, changing all the ideals of God. And now uh, it's just, it is what to get it, how you live, whatever. Go for it, whatever you want to go for, blah, blah, blah. But we are in a spiritual battle right now. We're in a spiritual battle right now. The quicker we recognize this, I didn't say you have to be afraid of the enemy. You just be wise of his devices. There's a reason why it seems like I get to the door, Pastor, but I keep slipping. I get to the door, but I keep not being able to walk in the door. There's an enemy out there. He don't want you to, to live at the level of God's design and purpose for your life. He don't want you. To, he wants you to accept good, but he don't want you to accept the level of God. And so we compromise because we didn't know that there was an enemy trying to take this thing away. So I know, I know, I know. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is going to be foreign because we probably haven't heard it. There's a lot of people haven't heard this. A lot of times when you start teaching this, they think you're going into to tradition. That's a deception of the enemy to tell you don't listen because it's tradition. No, this is the truth of God that's trying to break a chain that is on our life. And we've got to recognize you are in a spiritual battle. These petty situations are not just situations that just popped up. There's an enemy that's got an intention to destroy you. Jesus said it, and I'm going to believe what he said. I'm going. I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's not the person that with two legs walking up. There's a spirit that is behind this action, and I want to recognize the spirit so I can love the person. Watch this. So don't. Uh, some people don't believe that it's real. Some people don't believe it's real. And so watch this. What happens? I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally tear down this thing today. So what people do? What people do? Here, here it is. Here, here's what the enemy tells you. So, 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 so when the enemy comes, when we go through, you know what we do? We plan a getaway. We plan a getaway. Oh my God. This, the, the, the new believer, let's call it the new believer. The new believer right now, uh, when, when things hit in life, when tragedy hits in our life, we don't face it. You know what? We, we plan a getaway. Let's, let's, let's get away for a while. Let's go on a vacation. Let's buy a car. Let's buy a house. When the enemy hits, because he wants us to build our faith in material things. Just like we wrestle or not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not a physical person that we wrestle against. On the flip side of this whole uh, 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 spiritual warfare we're in, whenever the enemy comes in, we should not try to solve it with a material thing. We should not try to plan when he comes against us, let's go on a getaway. No, God is trying to give you deliverance, not a getaway. He wants you to face it this time because he plans to deliver you from your calamity. He's telling you to stand up and say this time enough is enough, not a vacation. Man, I'm seeing believers that are sick. And, and as a po they, they, the enemy has suggested to us that this is just something that we have to go through. When the scripture says that by his stripes, we are healed, completely healed. It's the design of Christ to heal us. The Bible says this in 2 in Corinthians. He said, he that knew no sin became sin 
that I might become a son. And he uh, became poverty so that I can live a rich life. And the enemy is telling us, no, I tell you what, you've just gone through something, you've been sick. Now go on vacation to have an excursion, a getaway from. But when you get away, you got to come back to. So God is saying, I want to deliver. But there is a way to get this. We got to recognize and stop listening to the lies. You got to stop listening to the lies. So, so, so here, 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 I want to explain this. We're in warfare right now. I'm not trying to speak doom. I'm not trying to speak, uh, telling you to be afraid. No, the Bible says we should be aware of the enemy's devices. I want you to be aware. Yes, he's going to be busy. But yes, God has given you what it takes to overcome every one of his uh, uh, devices and that's what because it's important that we recognize him it's important that we take dominion it's important that we stand up to because not only are we standing up for ourselves we are rebuking the spirit that is trying to devour our family as well and so it's very important. Now, like I say, this is all sparked from the conversation that I had with my son when he says that I'm going through some things, not because it's finances, but the enemy tried to fight the mind. He tried to throw things by default. I can go up and down my stairs, but there are times when something is in the stair that messes up my rhythm. And so now what I would easily move through, now I'm having to calculate. And when I calculate, I lose my rhythm. And what happens as a consequence, I might lose my step. Are y'all here with me today? And so God is trying to get you back in rhythm, but he's having to shock your mind. There are some things that the enemy planted in your doctrine that had caused you to move so far away from God. There are so many right now that are living in materialistic things that think that that is the blessing of God. And the enemy is letting you ride all the way to the top. Why does he do this? Because you never dealt with him. He let you go right to the top because he want to ride to the top because he's not interested in talking to you while you're on the trip. His job is to rob your soul, to get you at a position where you think you have arrived because you allowed him to go and then pull it all there. He don't want it while you're in process. Go ahead and have your medium victories. Go ahead and have your small victories. I want to deal with it when you get to the place where you think that you got it. Then I want to bring something into your world to rob you of your so, so we've got to recognize him and we got to deal with him. Now, now, watch this, watch this. Now, I want to speak to this. I got a few minutes and I need to speak to this. For those of you right now that said, Pastor, I've, I've, I've changed my life. I've done, I've done what God told me and to the best of my ability, to the best of my knowledge. Why am I still dealing with this thing that they told me that I I I I shouldn't have to deal with. Well, I didn't tell you that. They told you that. He he he. Here's the thing. He here's the thing. Paul says in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We took the text and, and and screwed it up and said it's about building a building. It's about buying a car. It's about buying a house. It's about you know doing all things. But when Paul, when you put it into context, what Paul is saying is when the enemy comes in. I can do it. I'm able to stand up against him. I'm able to tell him to go. I'm able to say, you won't do this this time. I can I, I can do it. I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to abound. I've learned how to see. See, this is what God, this is why for those of you that are listening to Revelation, the beginning of new life, everything starts with a word. Your level of word will determine your level of living. Your quality of word determines your quality of life. This is why the enemy has caused you to be in places to hear small things because he's setting up for something that the word that you're hearing probably not going to allow you to take advantage of when he sets you into a place and he's coming for your goods. Oh, I'm speaking today. He's getting ready. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me let me say this. There's some of you that understand my voice right now. You say, I've done what I thought I should do. I thought I obeyed God, but I'm still living. I'm still experiencing. I'm still seeing things that I thought I would not say. I want to address that really quickly right now because the enemy is trying to confuse you and tell you to give up on it all because you done tried everything and God did not answer. Well, I'm here to tell you, God is ready to answer. Hold on, hold up. Hold on, hold up. He's about to answer. You're in the season of your answer right now. You're getting ready to see God move on your behalf. 
but he's breaking down some things because he don't want you. See, we have accepted the acceptable substitution in life. And that's what the enemy will say. Substitute, go ahead. I'll let you have it. It looks like what God said, but it's really not what God said. And you'll never know that it's not what God said because discernment comes from the word of God. And if we're not in the word of God, we don't have discernment. So we will accept the acceptable substitution. And now he's breaking down. Maybe it's going to disappoint you, but I'm here to tell you when God gives you revelation on what he's really trying to give, it's going to be worth any counterfeit that you've been living with. It's, the season is over for the counterfeit. Now we got to see what God is saying in truth. In truth. Now, for those of you there again that said, I think I done done what God says, but I'm still seeing some things happening. Remember, don't say your life is bad. Say I'm living a moment. A moment is not your life. No more than a week of vacation is your life. You got to go back to work. So don't say the calamity that you just experienced is your life. It's just the moment. And God is going to get you back. You are about to recover. Yes, I've been doing what he said, but yes, I've been experiencing. I, I, I told you, I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience, from getting phone calls. I'm a pastor. Somebody's in the hospital. Somebody did this. Somebody did this. Then my son called, and I was praying and said, God, you need to answer me. And he says, I will. Let me show you where you are. You are in a spiritual warfare. You are right now. Don't think it's just something happening. You recognize the enemy so that you can go after him. Uh, Mark the ninth chapter. Mark nine. Mark nine. I'm gonna be quick. I'm gonna be quick. I'm gonna be quick. You might have to go back and listen to this again. Mark nine. You can still share this. You can still go in and say, "Uh oh, he's about to open it up. He's about to open it up." Mark nine. Mark nine. I'm starting the seventeenth verse. Here's a very familiar passage of scripture, a story. Jesus is coming from the Mount of Transfiguration. He's coming from the Mount, and and there's a commotion going on. There's a commotion going on. And here it is, uh, a father got a son that is vexed by devils. A father, this father's got a son that is vexed. Kind of like what story I just told you about. My son calling and saying, uh, 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 Dad, just pray for me because there's, a, there's some spirits, there's some things that just trying to mess with my faith. Here it is, Mark 9. Jesus is experiencing this right now. There's a father that's got a son that is vexed with devils. Now this is Mark 9. I think I want to start reading at the uh, a 17th verse. Please hear me. Please hear me. Please stay with me. Please stay with me. Please stay with me. Mark 17. This is going to answer some of the questions and some of the things that you've been pondering in your mind. Why is this happening when it seems like I'm doing everything that I think I should be doing but still I'm, I'm seeing things happen contrary to what I think and contrary to what God said. Watch this. Mark 17. And this is after Jesus seeing the commotion that's happening, and, and and he says what he says what is going on? The scribes are down there uh, 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 talking to the the fair, his 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 disciples. They're down there questioning the disciples. Seventeenth verse says, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, the debt, the father of the son. He says, Master, I have brought unto thee my son. I'm bringing my son unto thee, which had a dumb spirit now look at that look at that look at that he says master here's the commotion i brought unto thee my son who had a dumb spirit who's got a dumb now, now watch this watch this watch this. i want you to i want to unpack this because because some of you are experiencing right now you are you are experiencing a dumb spirit Yes, you experience some dumb things. This devil has brought some dumb things, some unusual things. This, you say, man, what just happened? That's stupid. Some of you right now are experiencing some stupid stuff right now. You wrestling not against flesh and blood with spiritual wickedness in high places. And he's dumb. Here's a dumb spirit. He's trying to bring dumb stuff into your life. Please stay with me i'm done god i'm doing what i think you told me to do but now i'm experiencing a dumb spirit yeah did you know your adversary is dumb he's trying to he's trying to confuse you with the stuff that he's causing to happen but he won't succeed this time it says i have brought unto thee a son which has a dumb spirit 18 verse says and wheresoever he taketh him he teareth him and he foameth and gnash with his teeth and pineth away and I spake to thou disciples that they should cast him out. 
and they could not. Watch what it says here. Watch, watch what it says here. I need you to get this now. He's, he says, my son has got a dumb spirit that's creating dumb stuff. That dumb stuff is happening. I need you to follow with me now. Follow with me. Follow with me now. Now notice this. It says, wherever he goes, the 18 verse says, and wherever he taketh him, in other words, He's putting him, he, my son is going places, and this thing is acting up and embarrassing him in the front of people. See, there's some things that you're experiencing right now that, that the enemy thinks, he's trying to tell you that you're helpless. And he, he says, you can get in the front, you can testify to these people if you want to about the goodness of God. But you get in the front of them, and I'm going to show out in your life. So you better shut up about how good God is. You better not talk. It, dumb stuff is happening. And so it says, wherever he takes them, he, he tears them. He, he shows out on them. He, he, he totally embarrassed. Anybody right now, anybody right now, you, 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 you speak faith, but now you're experiencing a situation that don't suggest faith. Oh, you, 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 you said how good God is to you, but right now the enemy has caused something to happen where it don't look like, and you're embarrassed. Because I said God was good God, but 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 now I'm not even my life right now. I just might as well sit somewhere in the corner and be quiet. No 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 no. This is what the enemy is suggesting. Are you listening to me? See the Bible says in in, in I think Revelation five that we overcome how by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. So put a check. Is the blood of the Lamb being shed? Yes. The blood, he's already done it to over 2,000 years ago. The, the blood of the lamb, number one. And number two, the word of our testimony. This is why the enemy is trying to embarrass you and have you hold your mouth. He's trying to give you an experience that you are quiet because it doesn't look like faith. Why? Because to overcome, we are overcome by the blood of the lamb, check, and by the word of our testimony. If he can take your testimony, he says, I can take your victory. So, 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 now watch what it says here. Watch what it says here. Watch what it says here. And he foamed it. He gnashed with his teeth and pined it away. I spake to the disciples. Maybe you went to people for help and it didn't work. Maybe you went to people that you thought should have been able to help you with this type or this level of spiritual uh, 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 warfare and they couldn't. You thought they were. You thought they were people that should have, but it didn't happen. It didn't, it, it just didn't happen. Now watch this, watch this, don't, watch this what it says. Uh, 20th verse, 20th verse, 19th verse, let's do 19th verse, 19th verse says this. He answered him, this is Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. In other words, Jesus said, the things that you are seeing happening to you right now is because you lost your faith. Now let me interject. How does faith come? Faith comes by what I hear. So if I'm a faithless generation, I've got to change what I'm listening to. If faith comes by what I'm hearing and I become a faithless generation, it is incumbent upon me to start really, really scrutinizing what I'm allowing to come into my ear. Maybe you have gone to the disciples or gone to someone that looks like one that represents Christ, but now you're finding through the experience they are not uh, uh, representing God good at all. Just because somebody is called by his name does not mean that they're representing in word what he represents. That's the deception of the enemy. I thought they should be able to, I thought I can go anywhere and do, I thought I could hear anything just because I say I'm a church goer. That means that I'm receiving in my spirit the thing that gives me power over the enemy. This is what the father just said to Jesus. I brought him to your disciples who are students of yours. I see them around you all the time, but they didn't have any power to give me any answers to the issue. So Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. In other words, you have no faith because of what you are hearing. Oh, you have faith because you are faithless because of what you are hearing. Because faith does come by what you hear. Let's let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. How long shall I be with you? So bring him unto me. Jesus says, bring him unto me. Now here's it. He, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Twenty verse. Twenty verse. Here you go. And they brought him unto him. They brought the boy. They brought the, the, the demon-possessed boy that was vexed with devils unto Jesus. 
And when he saw him, be listen, say with me, when the boy sees Jesus, when the boy sees Jesus straightway, the spirit tear him. Please stay with me. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming, acting a complete, acting unseemly, acting foaming at the mouth. You, you got an enemy, an enemy that just completely embarrasses you, completely puts you in a position where it looks like, oh, what in the world is happening to him? What in the world is happening to her? What? Oh, my God. Oh, watch this, watch this, stay with me, stay with me. The 21st verse says, and he asked his father, how long is it again since, watch this, since this came upon him and he said of a child. Now, I want to, you to see this as I unpack this. Here it is. They bring this boy to Jesus who has the power to cast out. This enemy, this devil takes this boy and throws him, tears him, throws him down in the presence listen to me please in the presence of jesus jesus looks down and says how long has this happened does the father says to him this has happened his entire life don't miss this this has happened some of you right now the thing that the enemy has caused you to be in the calamities that he's caused at his own will he's he's done tormented you your entire life but please stay with me today today is the day of your delivery he says his whole life he's done this his whole life 22nd verse says and oft times please hear please hear this and oft time it has cast him into the fire how many right now have, are is experiencing something right now that the enemy has totally thrown you in the fire you say pastor right now i'm just here to tell you i'm gonna be honest with you right now things are not good i'm in the midst of the worst fire the heat has been turned up on me like never before if you can raise your hand i'm here to tell you you're in good company notice this, and off time it cast him into the fire and into the water from one extreme all the way to the other extreme how many experienced that from one i'm in the fire and as soon as i get out of the fire i'm into the water notice it i'm out of the Pan right into the pan into the skillet. It seems like I don't get any rest from these calamities that I'm experiencing right now. Notice that. Notice that. Throw them water to destroy him. Make no mistake about it. The thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. Let me interject right here, my brothers and my sisters. If he made you sick, he failed. Yeah, because his job, he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you. His his job is to literally take you out. If you're sick, he's he's fatal. Watch this, watch this, watch this. To destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That's your plea today. Lord, I need you and I need you right now. I done tried everything else. I can try. I've got to have you in my life. Now, I want to interject this because I need you to see this. I don't want you to miss this because the enemy is so deceptive. You dotted all your I's. You crossed all your T's. You've done what God told you to do, but he's still throwing you in the fire. You dotted all your I's. You crossed all your T's. He's still been embarrassing in your life. So much so to now you want to make sure I'm quiet because I don't want to say stuff that's going to embarrass me and have people looking at me crazy. Now, here's what could be very, very confusing is the fact that I'm bringing my issue to Jesus, and when I get in the presence of Jesus, everybody told me when I get it in the presence of Jesus he's going to make everything all right but I done brought my boy I done brought this situation in the presence of Jesus and this devil has just thrown him down caused him to phone at the mouth caused him to act unseemly all hell has just broken loose and I brought him to Jesus notice what Jesus says to the father because the enemy thought the enemy thought because he threw him in the fire, he thought that Jesus was going to be like the disciples. In other words, every time 
he bring the, the boy to the disciples and the enemy acts up. The disciples said, we prayed and nothing happened, so ain't nothing we can do. So the enemy tried the same tactic on Jesus. Let me act the fool in the presence of Jesus. This is what he's doing to you. You brought it to Jesus. You got in your life together. You got things in order and you're in the presence of God and that enemy still just, just acted up and thrown you in the fire. He just caused the situation to embarrass. He just caused something to happen that put you in the in a position that you didn't want to be in. But here's the answer to your dilemma today. The twenty, the twenty first verse says, and he asked his father. The father just said, if you can do anything, please heal my son. Here's Jesus rebuttal. Twenty first verse says, and he asked his father. Uh, well, let me go. Twenty third verse. Twenty third verse. Twenty third verse. Jesus answered and said unto him, if thou can it believe all things are possible to him that believe in other words watch this watch this jesus is not phased by the devil acting up because the devil thought he was going to get jesus and think jesus was going to back off because he just acted a fool because the disciples acted up the enemy did not know that he was dealing with the one <laughs> He was he was dealing with the one. Now watch this, watch this. This is very important that you get this. You have been in a situation, you brought it to God, you got in the presence of God, but it seemed like the situation didn't change. Well, he's about to address you once again because he's gonna give you the key to success in all manners of life. He says, you can bring it to me, but I just told you that you are a faithless generation. This is why you're having to deal and, 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 and contend with this. Now, Jesus tells the father, watch this, watch this. He says, if you got the faith, daddy, not if I got the faith, this acts of the enemy is not phasing me. He's, Jesus is telling him, it's not phasing me. But he's telling the father, if you got the faith, watch it, let me read it, let me read it. He says, and he says to him, if thou canest believe, after seeing all these uh, outbreaks, after seeing all these things happen, after seeing all these situations that you've gone through, after being in a, a, another situation that was even more drastic than the situation that you just gone through, he says that if you can muster up enough faith to believe, all things are possible to him that believe. In other words, your faith is going to cause you to overcome what the enemy thought he could deceive you in. And when the enemy thought he could give you an experience, your faith is about to allow you. It's about to allow you, daddy. It's about to allow you, lady. It's about to allow you, man, to cause what the enemy thought would kill you. Oh, this is so powerful. Everything that the enemy thought he was going to kill you with your faith coming alive again it's about and with the power of God because your faith engages the power of God. God is not phased by your situation. He is not messed up about what the devil is doing. He is not messed up by the incident that you've gone through, no matter how big it's been. He says, I'm not messed up about it. Now I got to get you to see. I've got to get you to believe again. I've got to get you to change the way you play, pray. I don't want you to pray the prayer of a victim. I want you to pray, to pray the prayer of a victor. You are not fighting for victory. You are fighting from victory. He's telling the dad, come back, snap yourself back together. Because now I'm about to answer your prayer. I'm about to bring you out. I'm about to bring you out. I'm about to answer now. Notice what it says here. And straightway, the father of the child cried out. He says, Lord, yeah, you're right. The problem haven't been anything but me not believing. I've been with the disciples. I've been with people. I've been hanging around people that cause my faith to be subpar. I've been hanging around. They've been church people. They've been people that, that, that's that got titles. They've been people that said they knew. They've been people. They, they I've been hanging around the wrong people, God, because they have caused my faith to fail me. They caused my belief in you to not be in place. So notice what he says. I admit it. You are right. It, the problem is mine. Notice what it says. And Jesus said, and Jesus saw that the people came running together. Uh, uh, watch this. Watch this. And Jesus saw the people came running together. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Now dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more. Let me unpack it and I'm going to be done. Let me unpack 25th first. No choices. I need you to see this. 25th verse. And Jesus saw that the people came running together. 
You see that? The Jesus saw, watch, watch. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the fire spirit. Notice this. That spirit has acted up in the front of people and embarrassed you in the crowd, made you shame in the crowd. Now the crowd is going to gather again, and he's about to rebuke that spirit in the front of everybody that talked about you, everybody that criticized you, everybody that laughed at you, everybody that said you would be. He's about to rebuke the spirit in that crowd. He's about to show the people that said you couldn't do it. The people say you wouldn't do it. The people say, I don't know what you think. And the people say, you don't stand a chance. He says, I'm about to give you deliverance in the front of them. I'm about to show out in the front of the people that thought I'm ashamed the devil in the front of the people that thought I couldn't do it. Oh my God. God is ready to give you a miracle. He said, I'm waiting on you to gather the crowd because I'm going to show out. I'm going to show out, 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 I'm going to show out. Get the people together. Don't you lose your testimony. You tell them that God is about to bring me out. I know you thought I was down. I know you thought I was out. I know you, I know you, I know you thought that this was going to kill me. I know you thought I didn't stand a chance. But gather around because God is about to show out on my behalf. I'm speaking to all of those that the enemy has embarrassed you, have told you, you ain't gonna never make it, has told you, you're in the presence of Jesus, you call yourself getting your life together, but still, look how I'm messing up your life. Well, he says, now, I got the crowd, the stage is set, I'm about to bless your life like I've never blessed your life before. Oh my goodness, he's about to do something. He's about to do something, he's about to do something for you. Now, you gotta speak it out of your own mouth. You got to admit, I was in a place that I had lost my faith because of the things that I had experienced. But I won't be refused in this season. I'm hanging around people that can build my faith again because I need my faith in God built again. I need to see God. I need to hear hear. I need to hear people that are people of faith as well. I need to hear, let only the things come into my ears and to my eyes that suggest I win. I win. I win, I win. I'm going to leave it alone because there's so much more that I can say there. I'm leaving it alone. I am blessed today. 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 Here's your moment of deliverance. I want to speak to those that have been going through here. You've been dealing with sicknesses. You've been dealing with other things. You've been dealing with all kinds of things. That, Like the text says, the 17th verse said, this was a dumb spirit. Yeah, the enemy tried to do dumb stuff. He tried to cause dumb stuff to happen in your life. But I'm here to tell you, today is the day of your deliverance. Don't allow him. Don't allow him to suggest that it's over for you. It is just the beginning for you and your life. Let us pray together today. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you today. Thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice on today, Lord. I thank you for this word. I thank you for, God, you bringing people out. I thank you for the miracles that you're working in their lives right now. God, I thank you right now. We come into agreement, God, that it ends the day. The chaos ceases the day. God, we are drawing closer to you we are building our faith again in your word god we are expecting you to do something supernatural we we believe we believe again we are believing again we're trusting again because you are our only hope so we put our trust in you we put our trust in you in jesus name amen amen and amen this is a wonderful day to be alive, my brothers and sisters. Don't you give up on God. Because God has not given up on you. Now, for those of you, those of you, please, please, my brother, please go listen to this again. And then, uh, there again, share this with at least 10 people. There's some people that's going through some things right now. And the enemy is just suggesting that it's over for them. But I'm here to tell you that it's not. It's just the beginning of their winning. Now is the winning season. It's the beginning of the winning season. Share this. Share. Go back and you go back and listen to it all over again. Go back and listen to it all over again. I tell you, I am so blessed. I two o'clock in the morning, I was listening to Pastor Angela uh, Thomas's uh, video, man, about submitting to the will of God. This is the season of submission. This is the season of not halfway doing what God said, but fully committing our lives to Him. 
in dedication to him because it's it, it's man it, it's, it's the season of dedication it's the season for you to commit it's the season it's the season of for you to stop believing a lie yes there is a, a a lifestyle in god that he desires for you to live and it's time for us to live it it's time for us to do it it's time for my life to honor god in all that i do every situation in all my ways i'm going to acknowledge him because he's directing my path Yes, he's directing my path and we're connecting to God again because deliverance is here for us. Amen. God is about to restore. He's about to restore. I'm excited right now. He's about to restore your life. Your life will honor your God. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So, so hey, go to my YouTube page. Go to my YouTube page. Pastor G at Network of Believers YouTube. Uh, I see you guys are going in and subscribing. Thank you, thank you. This is for those that those. There's a lot of people that's not on uh, 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 Facebook, and so you can share this video or share these uplifts with them. Uh, most people got YouTube by default on their phone. All you gotta do is go and share the link, and they can go and watch it through YouTube. Blessed are the feet of those that uh, spread the gospel or to uh, the pushers of the gospel. Even if you didn't preach the pastor, if you shared it with somebody, there's a blessing that is on your life. Go do it. Follow me at Twitter. Go to my Twitter account, Pastor G, the number four N O B at Pastor G, the number four N O B. There are some videos that I am not even doing live. I'm just posting them to my YouTube page, and when God gives me inspiration i just go in out and i do a live video and i put it on youtube so if you want to see them you just have to subscribe to my youtube page and if you go to subscribe subscribe to my youtube page they'll get you can push the notification button and it'll notify you when a new video has been uploaded uploaded i i, I uploaded two videos on last night so go and do that for me would you please now this is the weekend you're supposed to have a good time this weekend. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. Stop worrying about, stop living in apprehension. Stop. God is saying to you, he's blessed your life. He wants you to expect great things to happen because great things are going to happen for you. Now, Sunday morning, for those of you that are in the Little Rock area, you can come to my brick and mortar. What is the brick and mortar? That's my actual physical location. 1111 West Seventh Street, eleven eleven West Seventh Street, eleven eleven West Seventh Street. I would love to have you as our special guest. Nine a.m. eleven eleven West Seventh Street. I'm preaching and teaching on something, and I know I'm not. I'm not supposed to do this because y'all know how I am. But picking your crowd, picking your. It's, this is going to be such a revelation. At uh, at Pastor G four the number four you got to put the number four N O B under at Pastor G the number four N O B put the number four in between the G and the N yes yes I am uh, I am this Sunday man you don't I'm uh, I'm gonna open up something through the through the inspiration of God man this is going to bless I believe this is going to bless you're moving forward with the people that are supposed to move forward with you. Everybody, I don't care how good they are, they were not sculptured for the specifics of your life. They are good people. They're not bad people. You're not wrestling against the flesh and blood. But since you are in a spiritual, uh, since what you are, done, are, are doing from God is created in the spirit realm, everyone that is connected to that have to be a part of that spiritual exchange. So I can pick good people and they can hold up what God is trying to create in my spirituality. Are y'all listening to me? So it's very important that we, yes, that is, that we, that we understand these things. And I'm doing a teacher. This is going to be so powerful. Believe me, powerful. That's some things that I say at church. I don't say on uh, uh, Facebook Live. So I need you to be there Sunday, 9 a.m., 11, 11 West. 7th Street. Now, thank you guys. Thank you, Pastor DJ John. Thank you, Cookie, for being in the house. Thank you, Prophet Sean, for being in the house. Pastor Nolan Brown. My sister, Sarah, is in the house. Uh, New York, New Jersey, rather. rather. Thank God for you being in the house, no matter where she is in the world, and she travels all over the world as, as y'all know her as Sarah, uh, the professional. She's a professional singer. She's all over the world all the time. Thank God she's in lunchtime uplift no matter where she is in the world. Thank you for being faithful. Of course, my wife, my backbone, my rock, everything. Billy Cordell, what's up, Billy? Thank God for you. Rose Campbell, thank you so much for being in the house. 
uh paris always in the house thank you for your sacrifice for being there linda worship thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much let me see who else is in here i like to acknowledge people why because people could be doing so many other things beverly hudson thank you so much for being in the house shalanda uh brenda junebug it's really me Acklin. thank you for being in the house fred houston extraordinary musician i think he's in the chicago area thank god for him being in the house Pastor Joe Tallamore, thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for always being supportive. Thank you for being in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pastor Stevie Rucker, Stevie Robinson, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for being in the house. Marissa, thank you so much. For those of you who want to give, my wife has put an address in there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah, for your gift. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your gift. Michelle Davison, Thank you so much for being in the house today. Joes Scott Smith. Girl, thank you for being blessings are up on you. Thank you so much for being in the house. Conway Conway, thank you for being in the house. And all the others of you that it won't let me go back up and uh, see my mom. Thank God. Thank God for my mother being in the house. Leah from San Francisco is in the house. Marlo Lovelace. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're praying for Marlo. Thank you so much. Praying for Marlo's mom. Thank you so much. Praying for Marlo's daughter. Thank you so much, Marlo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're praying for all of you. Praying for the Esau's. Praying for Pastor Deron's uh, uh, father. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm praying. Thank God. Thank God. We're praying. We just we appreciate God for all that he's doing. I love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Okay, have a beautiful weekend. Okay, I'll see you guys Monday if I don't see you Sunday. See you guys Monday if I don't see you Sunday. Of course, uh, uh, Teresa and I will be on tomorrow inviting you guys out. Tomorrow is Saturday. Yeah, we'll be in, out inviting you guys out. Uh, yes, yes, Apostle Cinda, Cynthia Austin. Thank you so much. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Quanta Battles, thank you so much for being... Uh, I, I know I said that wrong. Uh, uh, Quanteria K Battle. Thank you so much for tuning in. The blessings of God up on your life. Give my love to her, Leah. Amen. 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 I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Out of here. Yeah. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Aunt Ass. Yes. Aunt Ass is in the house. I'm so glad you got your computer fixed and you up again. Thank God for that. Holler at you guys. I gotta get out of here because I, you know me. Man, I have not uh, stayed on here this long before, I don't think. So, I'm out of here. Love all you guys. Holler. Go listen again. Share this, share this, share this. Go listen again.